And welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to this very sacred quantum conversation, the streaming. We are here and we are live with you. This is where our converse, conversation on higher consciousness begins and continues. And this is QCTV. I'm so glad that you can join us. Thank you so much for being here. I want to invite you to register on this channel and also register at AcousticHealth.com and join our our new earth community. It really is a heart pod. Well, today I am so excited to bring you one of my most favorite guests on Quantum Conversations. That's because she truly is a way shower and she really helps us live this new earth and this higher vibration. You can see her. She's Sandra Walter and she <laughs> needs little introduction. Hello, Sandra. Well, blessing sister, it's such an honor to be here with you and the whole Quantum Conversations tribe. How exciting. It is very exciting. So what we're going to do here is really honor this heart space that we are moving into. It's a beautiful window to connect deeper into our sacred heart and really embody and bring in new codes and elevate ourselves into a really powerful place, a new earth place. And here we are ahead of the 88 Lion's Gate. And we've just passed through a really potent summer. Everything seems to be accelerating. Let's start with you. What's, uh, what's your take on, wow, these, this current summer? Oh my goodness. Well, the whole, the whole year has been that way. And we were, we were forewarned that embodiment, uh, enough of the, the people that were dedicated to their ascension and dedicated to embodying their Christ itself, as that started to happen, which started happening late last year, it really took off with the January activations and then March going into these kind of fuller embodiment experiences. And then my goodness, with, we've had three collective timeline shifts this year alone. And the last one was extremely powerful because it started releasing what we call freedom codes. And freedom codes, it has to do with, I, I don't know how deep you want me to go into this, but, uh, but it is timeline related. So all of us who are gatekeepers and grid workers have been working on this for a while, but there was a significant activation of what we call the crystalline corridor that had all of these Lemurian codes and Lemurian being representative of our past us embodying in the future, uh, embodying the present in the now, and then the future self, which is the ascended self, all kind of merging in these zero point moments. So with the activation of the Lemurian grid, which technically represents the past, everything that we've laid the foundation for, um, for hitting this trajectory shift, you know, we saw it, we used to see it back in the day. Oh, this is going to happen. Let's put all these things in place. So when we get to that vibrational level, we can activate this Lemurian code and really kind of boost our ascension if we make it that far. And sure enough, we did. We did in 1987 with the harmonic convergence, again in 2012, after all the activations and the ascension of Gaia. And now we're at that place where these what they call freedom codes, which technically are unity consciousness codes, Christed diamond shining purity. It's really a whole nother level uh, coming forth. So that activation happened uh, in June and July this year. Uh, was extremely strong. I got called off Mount Shasta just um, a, a few days before um, that activation happened on July 4th. And July 4th was this really unique turning point for the collective timeline shift where it was the full activation of the freedom codes a lot of shifting of the grid systems a little last ditch effort to try to steer it off course but no chance at this point and now we are reaping the benefits of what that activation is because the grids are getting flooded with a brand new level of consciousness and a brand new level of DNA activation. Technically, it's all has to do with DNA. Does that make sense? 
Yes, it does. And those who are open to receiving this light and simply being in this space of love is a very powerful activation for the DNA. Wow. Okay. So you mentioned three collective timeline shifts. What were those? There was one that happened at the, uh, in May, another one that happened June 4th and another one on July 4th. And was that the uh, earthquake? Yeah. Yeah. The, the yeah. last one that happened on July 4th was very powerful. And it, you have to realize that if you're a traveling gatekeeper or grid worker, you see that kind of activity all the time. But because it was, you know, earthquake activity or the elementals kind of going crazy when you're, when you're doing the work, but, um, and it's Gaia, it's Gaia herself responding to the light and the opening. And when we have this collective and like, I mean, there must have been thousands of us drawn to this particular activation of this crystalline corridor. And it's been going on since 2013, but this particular activation was going to be very strong and send us into the 2020 timelines. That's what all of this is about, is that the decision to go fully into the 2020 energies now, again, the time acceleration is getting um, more and more pronounced. So we're already in that window that opens up at the, at the end of December. We're already filtering in, you know, treating it just like a stargate. We're already filtering in that energy of the 2020 timeline split, shift, whatever you want to call it, uh, into this now. Because there were enough of us that were embodying that Christed state of beingness divine love, divine light, divine purpose, divine will. And it changes everything. It changed the grid. It, it literally activates our DNA so that the DNA activates stuff within Gaia. And then Gaia answers with these you know, earth, earthquakes. I mean, the earthquakes are releasing the living library. She's literally cracking open entire volumes of codes at this point. And it, it does need the release. Plus, there's been a lot of extra water uh around so the whole plate system starts to shift i mean it's it's earth changes it is what it is um but we're treating it in a much different way now i think a lot of people um were were hip to don't turn this into something negative just because the ground's shaking it's just an activation and while there were attempts to kind of steer it into something scary or more destructive or whatever uh, we completely overwrote that entire operation and some of us like myself were called i was called off of mount shasta to be on location on the morning of july 4th in the sierra valley right where the where, where the epicenter was see and that's amazing that's so you would you just followed the call the inner call and you just happened to be there no forewarning about that but you it was just you were there that's fascinating it was really direct i mean they get very direct like if you remember a few years ago with like the m flares the seven m flares aimed towards saturn and like that big, big operation it's like it gets so on point but the um but the direction was to be uh on shasta for three days um, through that last eclipse in uh, on July 2nd. And then I had to dart out of there on July 3rd. Um, crystals, I had a whole bunch of amethyst crystals were activated in the presence of the brotherhood. You know, uh, Mount Shasta is one of the HQs for the brotherhood. And that's, you know, great white brotherhood from Sirius, the lodge, whatever you want to call it. It's an assembly of uh, alliance folks, uh, positive alliance folks. Um, that have deep roots to uh, serving the ascension. And when you're connected with them, they get very direct. They get very direct. They take everything else out of your path. I mean, my house went away. Everything was just like gone, 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 gone. Just like, okay, I'm paying attention. It has started happening back in April with the crystalline convergence. That was a real, we were talking about that earlier. It was a real timeline shift and mission service shift for a lot of us. And when that starts coming in, they start getting very direct. The crystals had to be activated and the crystals had to be placed in certain uh, certain places. 
And then I had to be to Mono Lake by um, sunset on July 3rd. So I'm kind of like blessed and on Shasta to get there in time. And then it was keep keep pushing, keep pushing. There was this big standing gate, what we call a standing gate. A lot of times the gateways um, lie flat. And you'll see like a spinning area flat on the ground. This one's very different. It actually stands up like a stargate would be. And it, it opened to the south and this big blast of energy occurred uh, when I activated that and it flowed down toward Barstow. And I was like, wow, that's really strong. Like what's happening there? And they were like, we know it's dark, but keep uh, keep going. You know, it was after sunset. So I'm like, well, it's, can I like crash for the night or <laughs> like what's going on? And they're like, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. So I had to be um, at, at toward the epicenter as close as I could be uh, that morning. And then I understood why. So I was literally standing out in, in the desert. It's a very remote area. Standing out in, in the desert, you know, with my hands up doing gate work and just feeling this huge release from Gaia. I mean, that I've worked the Crystalline Corridor since 2013 and it I've never felt anything like that. And I could feel it just like recoding and encoding my, my DNA, my cells and my fields. Like I was feeling full on transformation in that point. And you know, the, the ground is shaking, <laughs> it's kind of dramatic, but it was just like, wow, something brand new is being birthed in this moment. And then you could feel it like going out toward Washington, Glastonbury. Like it was like hitting all of these points where the freedom codes would start getting activated. And I don't know, the behind the scenes stuff was was somewhat dramatic too because it was it was immediately it was like tell the others tell the light workers tell the gatekeepers tell the grid workers this is not you know this is not anything negative what's going on right now and please don't allow it to be steered in that direction because there was an opportunity there to like turn it into something else and and here we are a couple weeks later no chance so it's um it was a very strong activation and then it was i had to come to sedona and i'm going to be here for a little bit after, even after my travels i got to do la and ventura and go back to shasta and then i'm coming back to sedona i'm just like oh my gosh like i, I thought this part of my journey was done so not done my goodness so, my goodness <clears throat> I love hearing how you just listen to the call and it's testimony that we definitely are guided. And so it's so beautiful to witness you following that guidance and oh my goodness. So let's talk about like being there out on the land and feeling this earthquake. That is extraordinary. What did the land look like? I mean, that you were definitely there for a reason, um, but can you describe like what it looked like? Well, because it's a, Big, it's a big open area of the Mojave, so you don't you don't see rumbling or or you know the, this kind of thing. Um, it was just like you know obviously the the ground is kind of like rocking and rolling, um, but that that part of it wasn't as dramatic as the as the light and the codes and the things yes. that were popping open. And for again for somebody like me who's been working this area for for quite a few years. It was just like, oh my gosh, this is the point on the timeline when that happens, you know. It, and and because the, the 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 masters who I walk with don't provide a whole heck of a lot of uh, details on exactly what this is going to do and when it's going to do it and everything, they're just like, you have to be there, you have to be there, you have to be there, and it gets overwhelming. You know, and you just, after all these years of, you have to be there. And I mean, I've been moving around since 2001, <laughs> so it's been a while. But uh, but yeah, I know that sensation of like, oh, something's something's going down. You know, yeah. some, something's about to occur. And this is the year for it with all these timeline shifts and everything that would, that had happened. And even June, June 4th was such a, a release of, all, it was like a release of the old um, gatekeeping and, and grid work and everything. Like a, the freedom started stepping forth. Like this is inevitable. This is going to happen. So then what happened on July 4th was like, oh, that's what we were seeing back in June. 
and uh, and it's beautiful to to see how they all build on on one another and they you know it's and and again because it's dna related you know when i when it try i it's hard to kind of um take a look at the why uh you know why does the master gatekeeper from shasta have to be there like why you know apparently i was the one who answered the call so some a lot of this has to do with agreements on the ground so you need somebody in the physical with that kind of um i guess to open the the mono lake thing required certain syrian dna codes because it's actually connected to sirius that that stargate so um as somebody who has some syrian dna um you know that's part of the equation who's willing to go who's listening who's not like so involved in their own journey that they're actually you know listening tapping in or whatever who's who has the means to go to the middle of the desert who's been there before i mean i've laid grids all over the Mojave, but never anything like this. Nothing as, mm. as dramatic as that. But but you could feel it. I mean, there's like helicopters going over because they're looking for cracks, you know, <laughs> like did anybody like fall in kind of thing. So it's like that, that's happening. And there's a lot of traffic, uh, you know, which is unusual for, for the Mojave. There's cars going by once in a while and stuff. Usually you see like nobody out there. And it was just, um, it was interesting to see how the, the locals in that area, I stopped in a, a gas station in Johannesburg, and it was interesting to see the people who were coming in that completely unprepared for earth changes, just like buying all the water, filling up all their gas cans, you know, and everything, because they didn't know if it was going to get more dramatic or how long they're going to, are, are they going to be without power, you know, just all, all, all those little human things. And it was beautiful to interact with them and the, the shopkeeper for the gas station there and everything, just sharing their stories. And it really brings people together, which is the beautiful part of it because people do help each other out when things like that happen. So it has that element of unity and togetherness, which is, which is lovely. Um, but it also can be, you know, unnerving for, for a lot of people. They're just kind of freaked out, like, oh, I didn't see this coming at all kind of thing. So it's kind of beautiful to experience that part of humanity and coming myself coming from a community that endures like a lot of uh, severe storms and things like that on Mount Shasta because you're remote and at elevation, you know, and you have to, you have to deal with each other. You have to help each other out. So it was kind of beautiful to see that kind of vibe uh, coming down into you know, the desert and a, a lot of people moved to the Mojave because they don't want to see anybody else so it was interesting to see how people were coming together and maybe they never talked to people and all of a sudden there's like people in their field and they're freaked out and it was it was kind of beautiful to see people rediscovering their um, humanity and their willingness to help each other so it was gorgeous it is beautiful, yes, and um, that gives a lot of hope, doesn't it, to um, all of us coming together. So these freedom codes, you literally felt this activation within yourself, and it's the crystalline corridor. So um, can you speak a little bit more about the power of this crystalline corridor? Um, you know, where it actually goes. We know that Arkansas is huge, right? Mm -hmm. And even here in Colorado, we can be uh, on the land and see some of that pure quartz rock, maybe not so clear as you get in the crystal formations in Arkansas, but the rocks are still here. So for those who may not be familiar, kind of describe the stretch of this corridor because it's uh, significant. Yeah, well, the whole, I mean, the whole reason why I was called out to Mount Shasta to begin with, I mean, it was literally in New York when I got called to Mount Shasta, but, but the whole reason behind that, like, so, you know, so much of the journey comes together later, uh, you know, you follow the guidance and you're like, I don't know, I'm going to Mount Shasta, you know, no money, no job, don't know anybody, just like crossing the country, okay, here we go, kind of thing, and the more that your, your journey uh, unfolds and especially somewhere in Mount Shasta, which is operating like a crown chakra at this point. So your ability to 
merge with your higher self is very clear there or can be very clear there if you're on the path and, and want that, desire that. But the whole re reason why I got called out there was because of all this, uh, all these Lemurian templates that were inserted into the mountain and it takes, you know, you have to be a um, adept at gatekeeping in order to, uh, to access that, you know, to get in there and see it and unlock it. And, and then it was building uh, or rather unlocking, activating this huge area that was actually technically part of Lemuria. Back in the day, you know, the crust is very pliable. So when Lemuria was, was um, having its, its downfall, uh, the, you know, the whole, the whole plate was sloshing around for quite a few thousand years. So there are parts of the entire Western side of North America that were part of Lemuria, you know, that land gets, cr you know, crashes into uh, the Midwest and creates the Rockies, and Grand Canyons and all that kind of stuff. I mean, technically that's, that's not from like ice, <laughs> it's from other stuff. It's from Flushing our catastrophe. Continents and just like, there was a lot of activity for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. You know, that's where all the volcanoes and everything come from all that stuff that's all along the side, the Western side of the North America. So it goes all the way up into Alaska and it goes down into Mexico. And it's the, the, the rim, the rim itself has held a, a lot of those codes because again, as, as Lemurians in the past, you know, our past selves uh, had the foresight to go, okay, so if ascension is the intention of this planetary consciousness, how can we maintain the timeline? How can we maintain that Christed, primary Christed ascension timeline that is this overarching thing that this planet could experience? And it was, and when people talk about like inner earth folks trying to maintain their timelines, it's exactly what we're talking about. It's the same, if you want to say Lemurian, inner earth, middle earth, I, I don't care what you call it, it's all the same thing. It's our past selves that still have a very strong presence um, and a, a lot of it somewhat physical. I mean, I've seen Lemurians and seen inner earth folks that are as, you know, as solid as you and me, maybe a little um, more vibey, holographic, but, but quite real. And it, uh, it, it all has to do with this maintaining this primary Christ timeline. And the, the gatekeepers and the grid workers, a lot of light workers consistently work on timelines you know collective timelines and we work on ours personally but when it comes to collective trajectory shifts and disclosure and change changeovers and and different systems and everything because the energy is getting so intense with our location in the galaxy and our location in the universe those uh stargate flows that are coming in especially the one through sirius right now that syrian gate's been open for of months, it provides really strong support for higher collective consciousness decisions because the higher consciousness has more weight, has more pull, has more influence. And that's quantum in effect. The higher the vibration, the more pull you have to pull up uh, lower realities into a higher state of consciousness. And we're fully supported by the photon Tonic light influxes, the stuff coming through the sun, the things coming through the galactic center, through the great central sun, all of that is really taking off now because we're getting to these collective trajectory shifts. And if we're all making the decision, you know, if the high, the high vibe tribe is making the decision, yes, let's make the jump and you do the work, then Gaia responds, the sun responds, you know, all, all of this stuff starts getting very coordinated and a little bit uh, accelerated too. So all of a sudden we hit our 2020 wall. We're like, wow, here we are. And it's, we're already connected to that. We don't have to wait for December in order to receive that. So that's what that's about. And the freedom codes are literally splintering off from the old timelines. So we've been in a timeline split since 2011. But the, but the timeline and split starts amplifying in a different way. And again, you know, people are treating it like a physical thing. You're either here or there. That's still duality. 
you have to think of it as states of consciousness that the higher self has already made that decision. If you're on the ascension path, if you're already engaged in higher consciousness and creating new earth and everything, your higher self, your over soul has already made the decision, we are ascending, period. And then it trickles down through the realms and you get the physicalized representation of that. It's the same thing that's happening with the timeline split. The higher Christed timeline becomes a physical thing. That's what embodiment is about. You're physicalizing what's happening with your higher self, with your Christ itself, with your, your I am presence, whatever you wanna call it. You're actually becoming a physical presence so that that light and those codes can get activated in the physicalized version of Gaia and completely transform the realities that she's supporting. So you've got these two different platforms right now, old earth, new earth, and the more of us that are kind of tipping the scales into the new earth realm, you start building that energy right through your DNA, right through your crystalline structures, activating that. If you've got the sparkly skin and everything else is going on with ascension right now, you're becoming more crystalline. You're becoming a physicalized representation of that higher experience. And then it has more pull, so it makes the, the rainbow bridge activity easier. And that rainbow bridge, it's always been DNA related, but it does create these, um, they're, they're kind of like stargaze pathways in, in themselves of uh, pathways for any willing heart that wants to ascend. And, you know, as the realities divide and you get a little further and further away from each other, it makes it easier for people to jump, even if it's last second. Does that make sense? Yes. And so with the bifurcation, then, as we hold this new earth template within ourselves and follow that Christed timeline, you're saying that others can jump over to it from old earth, they can jump over. Yeah, it creates, it creates um, pathways. They keep calling them crystalline pathways, but it's like crystalline pathways to the new earth, because technically a lot of us are ascended already. We're already existing in that realm. That's the only reason why we see it and we feel it. It's the only reason why the brotherhood comes knocking on your door to go to the Mojave in the middle of the desert is because you, you've already got, you know, two feet on the other side. So when you're working with both sides of the veils like that, um, it becomes clearer and it becomes more powerful, stronger, you know, be, you become a stronger light worker, light warrior, whatever you want to call it. Um, which is which is fantastic, you know, because then you're actually merging with the mastery strands or layers within your 144 structure, within your 12 strand structure, you're actually activating your mastery level, whereas like you literally cannot create distortion anymore. You would never lie, cheat, steal, do something terrible to somebody else. It doesn't even cross your heart to even create that anymore. You're just like, why, why would you do that? You know, and, and early on in the ascension process, you're making those choices. You know, you're making those choices moment to moment. For for those of you who are earlier on in your process, you make those choices moment to moment of is this, I mean, you could literally ask yourself, is this worth my ascension? Really? Really? Like if you were if you're betting everything on your ascension, making that choice, and that's the first step that's the first step in any ascension process in the ascension path making the choice to ascend when you make that decision and you start aligning everything to that you will consistently ask yourself is it, if any kind of distortion comes in your field or anger or resentment or whatever you're like wait is this do i want to cling to this is it worth my ascension and if the answer is no you'll have a much easier time shedding that stuff but you'll also start turning on your mastery strands because all of a sudden you're kind of proving it to your higher self not that you have anything to prove but you're kind of demonstrating right through the body vehicle i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready for the next thing I'm ready for the next thing and then higher self will give permission you can ask but higher self will give permission for interaction for higher states of service for purity and divinity 
And that's something, well, let's roll into the lion's gate now, because the, the lion's gate, this, this passage through, through all of August really is shifting, turning on these diamond, crystalline, golden, Christed codes. So the embodiment's been going on for quite a few months and then you have timeline shift, timeline shift, timeline shift, release of the freedom codes. All of a sudden you can turn on parts of your DNA that weren't um, capable of turning on before. And you do that right through the heart and we'll, we'll do an activation in a bit, but it's available. That's the key thing is to remember this is available. And if you're walking around doing the same thing that you were doing a month ago, uh, you got to mix it up. <laughs> you got to mix it up and pay attention and go, wait a minute. I'm just going to drop everything again, the moment to moment choice. I need to drop everything and pick up some of these codes. I need to go out on Gaia and sit my butt down and really connect with her because that's mom. That's divine mother. She's got everything for you. She's opening up the living library so that you can reactivate that part of yourself that is the living library because your DNA is your own living library of everything you have ever been and ever will be and are in this now moment, everything. And that's not just Gaia related, that's your galactic levels, your universal levels, everything. Your DNA is a complete record of every possibility and everything you've experienced or will experience. So when you get into zero point, right through the heart, you're able to access that and turn it on. And it doesn't matter if you see your past or see your future or anything like that. It's your pure intention to be divine love, to go into willingly, willingly into a Christed state. That is the key. I think you already put us there just as we were listening to that. It is a beingness of love. All right. Sandra, let's do an activation okay. with the diamond light and, and receive some of these codes and activate some DNA. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, everybody, just take a breath and get fully into your heart. So drop out of the mind level altogether and lower the elevator. Let's come to the heart floor and just put all of your focus there in this now moment. Breathe, letting everything else go and making that choice in this now moment. Nothing else is as important as this now. Connecting with your brothers and sisters, connecting with the God within. And let's just light up that diamond star, that pure heart, that is your connection of source, the source spark within. Put all of your focus there and light it up. And really bringing in the freedom of becoming, of being, that diamond crystalline, you might see some gold, Sometimes some of that rainbow plasma might come in there, but let's make it as pure and as bright as possible. Breathing into it, really lighting up that star. Now, rather than anchoring into the sun or Gaia, let's really embrace the freedom codes and be our own unique spark star of source, true son of God. So let's just take some light from the heart center and send it up through the ascension column, through the crown, and let that ball of light go as far as it likes. Don't anchor it to a star, don't anchor it to a galaxy, don't anchor it to a source, the source is within. Just let it go up and expand as far as it likes as long as you can maintain that ball of light, maintain the heart, maintain that star rising, expanding. And 
and let that be maintained and then send another one, another ball of light down from the heart through the ascension column, not into Gaia, just send it out as far as it will go. For some of you, that's infinite. You immediately just let it go. As long as you can still see it and feel it. Diamond ball of light. Creating that third point, one above, one in the center in the heart, one below. Let's create some balance, sending out another ball of light to the left. Again, as far as it will go, balancing with the other two points that have been sent out, let it anchor there. Beautiful. Now coming out to the right, another ball of light, creating another anchor point. Radiate pure light, a little brighter. We've got the four points and the center. Coming back to the center, let's go forward and back, sending out a ball of light forward, as far as it will go, balancing with the other points you've sent out. You don't have to connect it with a cord of light, but if you like that, if it makes you feel more comfortable, so be it. Coming back to the heart and sending that last point out through the back. A lot of folks protect from the back, so send that star out, maintaining the heart, sending the ball of light out through the back as far as it wants to go. Now become aware of all seven points of light, above, below, side to side, front to back, and the heart center. Look at the diamond you have created. Connect them all with the pure diamond shining, pure light of the Christ. Call it forth, I call forth the pure diamond shining light of the Christ. My crystalline ascended self. Now let's expand the heart center outward and let's do the adept method. The adept method is the further you go within, the brighter and more expanded the heart center becomes. So maintaining that diamond structure and let's go within, breathe in, right into the heart center, getting brighter and exhale, filling the octahedron, letting the fields expand. The body will go away and you'll just be that light just that spark, just that star, just that diamond. Go further within, breathe in. Exhale and expand out. And let's go within three steps, becoming brighter and brighter and brighter. Diamond codes activate further within to the core of source within letting the fields expand and further within, letting the infinity codes take those points of light, taking the light field out as far as it will go. And one more step going further within. Purity, divinity, Pure source consciousness, infinite creator come. And let your fields expand. Let the octahedron become infinite. It will probably dissolve. 
and let the heart star take command. Timeless, infinite, absolute freedom. You might see diamond DNA swirling around that star or within it. Let the diamond codes activate. And we call them forth. In the name of the divine human creator incarnate that I am, I call forth the pure activation of the diamond shining light of the Christ to recode all of my divine DNA into 100% purity, divinity, and the full activation of my ascension in this now. Fully activating the freedom codes within my DNA. Releasing the past and the future into the zero point now. Breathe. Brighten. Allowing the 12 strand structure to activate. The 144 crystalline DNA structure activate. Use that diamond light straight from the heart, not from any other source, but within. Shine forth. The pure true self the unique expression of God that you are. Freedom codes activate. Diamond crystalline codes activate. I am all that I am. Take a breath. Allow that light to shine through the body now, coming back, shining through the physical, your energy fields. If you're someone still experiencing a separate colored chakras, unify them in this now in pure diamond shining light overriding and overriding all lesser realities, all past belief systems, let it go. Become the pure light. So it is. I'll feel that full divine love. And let's just radiate it out to all of humanity. Humanity is the thing that needs the most of our attention right now. So radiate that out into the collective human heart grid. Just providing that, providing unconditional love for anyone who is in need or requesting that in this moment. For any willing heart embracing ascension, you have our full support. And shining our gratitude right through the heart center into the crystalline core of Gaia. Shining our pure love and gratitude out through all the kingdoms, elementals, the queendom. And blessings to Solaris. Thank you, beloved son. Little extra love to Sirius. Thank you for the gateway. Sending our love 
to the Lemurian aspects, to the Lyrans, to the Pleiadians, to the Andromedans, Arcturians, Syrians, all involved in this step in our ascension. And out to divine cosmic mother, heavenly father, the paradise sons and daughters of God, great central sun and the infinite creator. Thank you for this experience. Shine your pure love to all of these realms. And take a breath right into the heart center, hands at the heart. Beautiful. Coming back into the room. Feel it. Anytime you give yourself an activation or receive an activation, you want to feel what is different, what's changing in my fields, and pay, and pay attention to that rather than immediately getting distracted and going back into the way you were. Pay attention. What has changed? What feels different? What do I need to incorporate in my process? Perhaps it's showing you something you need to work on. What parts of yourself were perhaps afraid of freedom, afraid of letting go, afraid of not anchoring into the old belief systems? Pay attention to that, journal it, meditate on it. This is the good work right now, is fully accepting how this can shift your journey, how this changes your personal timelines as well as collectively. What is it demonstrating? Do you have it's all about creativity. So what creative ideas can you embrace? Pay attention. <laughs> Pay attention this night. Make sure you get out in nature, do a hike, do a walk, do a meditation. Connect with your pure, true self that is attempting to, to physicalize, to work right through this conduit, this body vehicle. Beautiful. How are you feeling, Loren? very expansive mm -hmm. and very light and deeply connected through the heart, the heart star. Thank you for that. I know everyone is feeling it. I hope everyone is feeling it. Wow. Mm -hmm. To do this every day, to do this every moment, to pay mm -hmm. attention in this way. What a powerful, powerful tool and a great gift, a gift within ourselves. Yeah, and the more often that, that uh, you can do that, taking that moment to really just come into that stillness, that zero point within, brighten it, you know, you are that creator being. But the more that you can tap into that peace, the faster the realities change and, and the faster the, the timelines will change for everyone. So So it is an act of service, even though it feels maybe like it's, service to your own journey. It's actually a very strong collective activation. Powerful. Really important as well uh, as we continue through this year. And it really places full responsibility on us as we work with this within ourselves and radiate it to the world. It's beautiful. Yes. Yes. And remember that is the you know that's a boom the boomerang effect. The more love you pour out, the more you get back. So it is a cyclical thing so when we're radiating our love and gratitude and that's it's such an easy way to shift even if you're if you're having a hard time because this can be you know there's a lot of emotional clearing going on too when this kind of codes come forward you need to make room for the new light so a lot of times it comes out your eyeballs right or it's an emotion you know weeping for no reason or whatever it's just making more room for the new but the more that you can embrace that and pay attention to it and really, you know, gratitude is an easy way to shift your energy and, and certainly light up your light body is through the gratitude, even just for where you are in your journey, just for trying, you know, just for making the attempt and really 
find the things that you're grateful for. And uh, a lot of the time it's, it's easy to be uh, grateful for, uh, you know, very simple things, you know, uh, animals and plants and Gaia and water and beauty uh, are all easy ways to, uh, to express gratitude. But when we get into um, gratitude for each other, for the ascension itself, for divine love itself, you know, that's that purity coming back. And these diamond codes are very pure. So they can feel extremely peaceful and really put you into that eye of the storm. You know, if you're, if you're somebody who loves to look at what the lower reality is up to, you might want to pull back from that a little bit. You know, it depends on what your role is. So maybe you're somebody who's really mixing it up with the lower realms. But if you're somebody who is just watching that out of habit or perhaps addiction, you might want to break that addiction. You know, a lot of addictions going away at this time too. Um, and make that choice moment to moment. Is it worth my ascension to be staring at all this polarity? No, probably not. You no. know, go, go forth and create the new. You know, that's been on the menu for a long time. Don't watch it burn. Go over here. Don't watch it burn. Create the new because that's what you're going to become. You're not going to become a victim of the old stuff crumbling away. You're going to become a new earth creator being. You know, that's that Christed state. You get to experience the creator working right through you. It's quite remarkable. Yay. New earth creator beings, get ready because this is it. <laughs> this is game on, game on. Beautiful words there, Sandra, and reminders for us to really go forward and create, to tap in in this way and to feel that energy. My goodness, it's beautiful. And to bring it forward and help and be in service, be in service and make a difference in the world and anchor in the new earth realities. They are happening in every moment. Yeah, and, and do your best. You know, I, I, know there's, I know there's a lot going on with the body and the timelines and the realities and the service and people getting pulled all over the place. You know, I get pulled away from home of seven years and, and everything just for this new thing. And it's, it really is moment to moment, like just make the most of what is presenting for you right now and trust yourself, trust love, trust creativity, you know, and, and turn off the things that might keep you small in, in this moment or might keep you looping in the old, uh, trying to create some kind of comfort Kind of like, well, just for now, just for now, I'll just keep doing the same thing because uh, it's all going to, everyone's been telling me it's all going to change anyway, so I'm just going to wait. It's a dangerous place to be right now, my friends. Yes, and so, you know, a lot of people are reporting just these upgrades this year. We saw it um, actually since last sol solstice a year ago last summer. And um so everything new, just doing one thing little new, one new little thing there, one. And, and so we're kind of going along tweaking everything. And I love it because that's really fun. And, and so let it roll, get creative. Let's have fun. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't forget the fun part of it. And you know, a lot of us finding new people to, to work with too. I mean, I'm doing that right now. I'm just kind of scanning and trying to get get together with people and going, well, let's just, let's invite everyone to the table and see who shows up, you know, at higher levels, you show me who, who shows up, who doesn't show up, who should I be uh, co-creating with right now? This is what I want to do. Let's, let's see like what things on the to-do list uh, survive <laughs> the timeline shift and what stuff is just like, you know what, honey, forget it. <laughs> That's just not going to happen. There's something bigger. There's something else, you know, and a lot of it is, um, you know, what you say yes to and, and trusting, you know, trusting a higher self. I mean, if I goodness, imagine if I just didn't trust that my journey would just be so different if I hadn't made the moves and followed the direction and all of that. My goodness, I can't even, can't even imagine, don't even want to imagine what that would be like. 
but but for for me when you embrace those uh challenges of spirit the rewards you know you pull back you look at the big picture because in the moment it's going to look like one thing a month later oh that's what was happening <laughs> you really have to be in the moment with that trust and the full heart and Mm. And, uh, I'll be darned if it doesn't get proved to us one time after the other, every time you take a step in the direction of trust and expansion and really kind of proving to yourself as well as to your higher levels that you're willing to make this the whiz bang incarnation and really go for it and be open and like, wow, if there's freedom codes, then where do I not feel free? and shutting that down and going for for freedom how do i really want to express is there anything in me that makes me feel like i'm pushing up against resistance or i'm trying to play it safe you know for me that that's been especially coming out and talking about like et contact and stuff at like disclosure conferences i've never done that before mm -hmm. you know uh, an interesting part of the conversation and I always kind of took it for granted. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like the, you know, that, that disclosure conversation was like loud and proud. And I was like, well, what's the, what's the big deal? And then people were like fascinated by, by contact, by stores. I'm like, well, where do you think all the messages have been coming from all this time? <laughs> you know, so it's kind of, it's kind of interesting to go, oh, you know what? I haven't really fully embraced sharing that part of the story, you know, so for me, that was like my challenge, you know, for, for any, anybody who's on the path, um, you, you do get challenged, you know, and that's part of the mastery expansion is like, what area are you maybe uncomfortable with, or you haven't explored yet, or you thought you were going to play with it and you kind of put it away in a box for a while, a lot, a lot of, um, I'm getting some guides coming back to me that I haven't seen in a long time that are doing mm -hmm. that, um, that Essianic uh, practice of kind of reminding me of things that I forgot about myself. You know, it feels like being in love. It's, mm -hmm. it's like a very romantic feeling to like have part of yourself come back into your field that you were like, oh, I totally forgot that part of myself and that part of my journey. And it's not, it's not going backwards. It's like, complimenting what the next thing is like don't forget this is what uh, another aspect that we want to play with for full creativity full expression that's part of you and you kind of put it away to do all this gatekeeping and all this Mount Shasta stuff and everything and now it's like coming back to to compliment me and the guides that go with it which are actually aspects of myself that you just wow like I oh yeah that thing that I used to do or that that way I used to feel, whatever, it's kind of expansion of the heart. It's quite beautiful. Yes, beautiful to see the expansion of the heart and really live that and embody it. Yeah, yeah I wanted to mention there about the whole disclosure conversation because it really is, it's almost like that, um, that aspect of uh, ufology, UFOlogy. It's so intriguing, lots of um, we could call it mainstream. The general public is so curious about it and so interested in it. And it's so wonderful to see you as such a beautiful bridge, a beautiful bridge of higher consciousness into the conversation. There's no room for fear in your conversation or in in, in the monologue that you present or the conversation that you present. And I think that's so very important. So kudos to you, Sandra, for really being able to get on a stage with the ufology crowd and be brave enough to do it. And I love it because we were chatting that this is the convergence. You are a bridge, we are a bridge. And so everything points to higher consciousness, right? Right, right. And, and for me, it was that that conversation was always 
just like, I mean, I, I lived, you know, I lived in the woods for, for months at a time sometimes, you know, my last seven, seven years and being up there on a interdimensional vortex gateway by, by yourself with all this like crazy, I mean, crazy stuff going on, um, you know, ships and, and beings and interaction, let alone the, the gate work and, and things like that that were happening. But, but even the ships alone, just learning how to call in your own ship. I was just talking to a, a, a brother in town about this. Like, yeah, it's your, your part of your DNA gets turned on and because it's DNA related, because it's it, technically, it's like a collective consciousness that's creating that light chip. And I was always kind of baffled, like how come there's a gate at like three o'clock in the morning and I'm the only one standing out here in the, in the middle and this giant gold light chip keeps showing up like every time there was a gate. And then I nicknamed it Big Goldie. And then there was all this like interaction. I'm on the ship, I'm off the ship or flying into the mountain, like all these, all these like crazy things, you know, from, from the outside perspective, it looked kind of crazy. But for me, it felt very natural because I'd had that kind of interaction since a child. But it was focusing on the sacredness rather than the sensationalism and the same thing goes with Sasquatch, who have been extremely good to me. I mean, being guard, literally guardians of me in the in the wilderness for for several years since 2012. Um, that kind of interaction, let alone the higher beings that were like bringing in the stuff about ascension, and then part of the conversation that I probably won't get to in, in disclosure was there. There was a whole there was a whole couple of years where there were um these these uh acts of clemency going on where there were beings that were actually interested in the ascension that were uh that people would perceive as negative you know that had had some some negative aspects kind of in interfering and stuff that wanted to make the jump and that were changing their hearts and changing their minds and were literally just coming into your field to be taught how to ascend, you know, how to, how to get in their hearts. And, and for some of them, um, you know, they don't have the lineage to even understand what unconditional love is about because they're trained in a different way. So it was really challenging and, and beautiful as a teacher to go, wow, something comes into your field that appears to be really negative and wants your help with, with trying to understand what Christed unconditional love is about it was it was a really it, I, I felt it was really beautiful and for some people they're like oh my god something negative came into my field i have to like triple shield and send it away and then i was like wait a minute we're the bigger being in the room you know you you put on your christ itself and you go how may i serve you you're presenting in my field for a reason how may i assist you what's going on no, and and for some of them, terrifying, right? <laughs> they just left. <laughs> They're just like, whoa, you know, because if you're awake, you're awake. You know, it, it's it kind of startles them. But there was, um, but that kind of interaction, and especially, you know, I focus on the interaction with the extremely positive beings because they always had these these beautiful. Um, messages for, for the that's where all the messages came from for the last 20 years you know it's been all these very positive messages about the ascension how to ascend how to create the light body how to do it you know how all how to's as well as all the heads up on the solar activity and and the uncanny timing and evidence we have at this point for uh for very clear connection with these realms. I mean, the evidence is, is certainly there. So for people that are still kind of coming at the disclosure or you, if you want to call it UFOlogy uh, community with, um, you know, as a doubting Thomas and, and they, you know, really want to stick their fingers in the wounds or whatever, the evidence is there. All you have, I mean, but it's up to them what they do with it. But the, especially for a, as a representative of the gatekeeping and grid working community, you know, people would look at us from the outside and be like, I don't know, you people are just running around with crystals and no idea what you're doing. So as a clear voice 
for that community and stepping forward going, look, if a being tells you in December that there's going to be seven M flares in May and it happens, something's going on. <laughs> you know, like, something's going on. If they tell you to put your hand up at a certain point, the certain, you know, a certain place in the mountain or whatever, and things happen that are on the charts, the 3D charts, so you could see, you know, all this different activity in that same moment, something's going on. <laughs> you know, something's happening. And the same with, with the earthquakes and being there and everything. Like it, there's there's evidence. So so I understand people's need for evidence and certainly there is that but my focus is on how can all of this interaction teach us how to ascend you know how does it how does it assist the trajectory because this all this work has all been about timelines and the ascension timeline and the ascension of the planet and we you know apparently we are extremely connected to that larger operation upstairs you know in higher realms that's us and kind of breaking down the barriers hey it's not me and them it's us we're one you know at that level 90 and above you know if whatever number you want to put on it people are like is it 4d is it 5d it's like who cares what are we talking about we're talking about an ascended realm of gaia that is providing a platform for a pure experience of you as a christed being living in on a planet being in that state of consciousness, a new earth. And there's all these prophecies and everything to, you know, back up the prediction, but to have the experience is the thing, truly. And there's all these higher level beings that's actually us in different realms that are, you know, teaching us, guiding us to merge with them. That's what the embodiment about is, is about, it's the merge higher self, lower self, multidimensional self, all these different aspects coming together so that you can have a very conscious experience of your ascension, which then sets forth and activates all the templates for anybody who's just starting to awaken to go through it in a much faster way because time is going on this ascension timeline. So you'll get more activations in a shorter period of time. I think we're all feeling it too, those activations in a shorter period of time. All right, so in a question from our major audience here, there's a there's a common one about grounding and how we hold these higher vibrations in the physical body. So Sandra, can you share a little bit about how we can move the physical body? What do you do in particularly with some of these codes coming through? Well, for, for me, the light has been extremely stimulating, especially in the last couple of years. Uh, I feel like I'm getting mildly electrocuted all the time now. <laughs> so it's just, it's constant, you know, that current is, is there. Um, and sometimes it can get um, very, it uh, feels like an alternate reality just kind of taking over and you get it's so expansive and the body is vibrating like so much that it feel it does it feels like a lightning uh going through your meridians um and yeah i'm i'm somewhat used to it but i also do a lot of of maintenance you know it's yoga every day it's it's earthing every day. It's can I get into a natural body of water as often as possible? You know, even here visiting here in Sedona, you know, you got to go over to the river. And even though it's 100 degrees out and everything, it's like just, you know, getting into that that natural flow because the, the water is getting very crystalline now. Um, it does take some work. I've, actually, I've also been doing a lot of yin yoga lately to um, really uh, open up because I, I did a lot of driving and traveling in the last uh, couple of weeks, you know, so you're kind of sitting for a while. So it just kind of like opens up the, the hips and the lower back and everything like that. Anybody who's working on a computer, Google <laughs> yin yoga on YouTube or whatever and, uh, and do it once in a while because you really have to open things up because otherwise when the energy 
pools, it starts creating disease uh, in the body. I work with the, the Taurus fields. I, you know, I consciously visualize and spin and command uh, my toroidal fields to spin and flow. The same with meridian work, uh, any kind of like Qigong, you know, movement, dancing. I have to move. I've spent a lot of time in the gym lately <laughs> because I have to move and I have to, you know, engage when, it, when you feel the codes kind of like coming through your, um, even, even your muscles and the tendons and the tissues and everything, they need to be moved. It needs to be, you know, it's like the energy has to go somewhere. And for me, like, I've just been like, cr you know, crushing weights and everything, just like spinning and running in the morning and everything. And, and then going to the gym at night and just like, I have so much energy, but I know, um, gosh, if I just like sit still on days like that, when it's really stimulating, I'll, I'll just be suffering, you know, I'll just feel, feel the energy like too much. Um, so as far as grounding goes, um, I've also found that uh, there's like a crystalline grounding going on. It's not, um, it's not anything like it used to be, you know, try to like really connect, like, like be heavy in the body at all. Um, my diet, has changed yet again you know it's all like celery juice and spirulina and and just like green juice and arugula and like there's zero grains there you know there hasn't been animals or anything for a while um but it uh you know i've, I've been a vegetarian since i was for like 20 over 20 years but um it just just any any kind of like starchy thing is gone you know there's just you, you really have to pay attention to what the crystalline structures are trying to do to the body and uh, a lot of hydration. My goodness, especially when there's solar activity, just a ton, drinking a ton of activated water. Again, you can program your water to do anything. You've got to come through the heart, get your hands on, you know, get, that's a, a good way to get your hands on. If you haven't done Reiki or any kind of energy work, or you're not working with crystals, start with water, charge your water right through your hands. Let that intention come right from the heart into the water and, you know, experiment with it. How's the water taste before? How's it taste afterward? You know, that's an ascension path too, because it gets people to turn their hands on. And then they're aware of the energy flying out of the, sh the hand chakras. And then they become more aware of, oh, now I can use this on my body. I can use this on my heart. I can use this on Gaia. I can use this on crystals. And I can use this to activate my light signature, everything else. It applies to everything. But if you start with water, like a very good healing grounding device. Now, you, you don't want to attempt to ground in the way that takes you a step backwards. You're never going to feel the way that you felt last year. It's gone let it go. If you're somebody who's leveling up and you're ascending, don't try, oh, I wish I felt like I did in 1999 or 2012 or that one time on that retreat last year or whatever. Let it go. Let it go. We have to keep up with, with what's going on. So the grounding part of it, try not to like drop cords into the core of Gaia or whatever. There's so much activity happening in the planet right now. You can barely anchor into the grid systems. It's so activated right now. So, so watch it. If you're trying to connect to something that's not there anymore or an old reality, don't plug yourself into the old reality. Stay present. Best advice, do, do that diamond heart activation. Go into the heart. And again, the more you go within, the more your energy fields expand. That's rainbow light body. The more you get concentrated in that conduit point through the infinite creator within, the bigger your energy is going to get. That's pure heart energy, pure source energy, right within the heart center. Everybody's got it. Depends on what you do with it, but you can amplify it. You can activate it, and then you're gonna you're gonna go light body. Your light body gets a lot bigger. That's the adept mastery way. Go within, and the energy fields expand practice play with that as your grounding you know this is this is your ultimate grounding and when you when you find yourself like what we did in the exercise 
uh, floating around as a star, you know, you got to you got to get used to that. All of a sudden, you're sovereign. All of a sudden, you're you're in your diamond state of consciousness, where you're not tethered to the planet, tethered to the star, tethered to the Pleiades or whatever. You're free. That's what the freedom codes are about. You're free. You're free from all of the flotsam of the old realities. <laughs> Oh my, doesn't that feel fresh and wonderful? Oh, I love it. Sandra, thank you so much for that. This has been exquisite today and so helpful to all of us, really stepping up and leveling up. It's not the same anymore. Okay. Um, well, I would love to have you close. And one thing that you just explained right there as we say goodbye is... Um, when we're centered in the heart in this way, when we're aligned, we're truly in tune with ourself, we need not worry about earth changes. We had a quick question about what should we be doing? What should we be stocking up on? And that just seems like old energy, right? And so when we're in this new, yes, it's love. Stock up on love. Stock up on love. <laughs> As, on as much love as you can handle, as much love as you can carry, yeah. that's what you want to take with you. That's your safe place. Your safe place is, is your DNA. <laughs> it's your crystalline DNA, honestly. I mean, your, your safe place is the heart. Nothing can touch you. And, that, and it's the same if you're in the body or out of the body. Doesn't matter. We're immortal, right? Just like Gaia and everything else. Go from there. Go from I'm immortal and, and just make your highest choice in the moment to be love and be kind and be, you know, just fully prepared for ascension any second. And then you start creating it and then you are the ascension. You know, it's not something you wait for. You're just like preparing, preparing, preparing. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, it's here. I am that. It's already happened. You know, and that realization makes, gives you that immortal swagger <laughs> put a little mastery in your step and then you won't worry about all this other stuff i mean if you have children to look after and families of course yeah i mean that that's been on the list since for decades it's like be smart about it of course water and food in the cupboard whatever people need in your household hopefully you'll take care of uh, the people and your in your neighborhood as well, if you have the ways and the means, if you have a space at all, yeah, might be nice to, to do that. But it, you know, put it, you put it on the shelf and you forget about it and you say prayers over it like, we're never going to need this. You know, and just go from there, go forth and create the new, you know, because if you're consistently prepping for something that's not going to happen, you wasted decades of your life preparing for nothing. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yay. All right. And this is the higher conversation. So thank you for that. Sandra Walter, what a beautiful way shower. What a beautiful teacher. Thank you so much for this quantum conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. It's been such an honor. Everybody join us for the Lion's Gate. 8.08 in the morning, Pacific time or any time that you're available doing a huge activation, opening, flowing these diamond freedom codes, unity consciousness for all. Say it with autonomy in your voice. You yes. know, in the absence of doubt, we are all God. So mode it be. So it is. So it is. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to mention as well, oh my gosh, the unity meditations. We were chatting before this show that uh, people are coming in like every day, tapping in. And I actually tapped into that whole field earlier today as well. We can do this at any time and it is palpable when we do it. But those are really beautiful. And you have been a huge leader on that. And so many people around the world are doing it, that that energy field is so magnificent. Thank yes. you. Invite everyone, tap in on Sundays. Go to my website, sandrawalter.com, and click on the thing that says Global Unity Meditations right there at the top.
and join in. Yes, beautiful. Well, I want to thank everyone for being here. And I want to thank my very special guest, Sandra Walter. We're going to be in a brief after show next in our Zoom audience. So um, we'll be taking some questions with Sandra. So thanks for that. Until then, Sandra, thank you. This has been magnificent. We'll see you again here soon on Quantum Conversations.